let's really hope I'm funny, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, a few months ago, I met the mayor of Yerevan. <laughs> I'll give you a few, mo few moments to digest that, get the mental picture, you know. No applause for that, no? Didn't think so. Uh, anyway, it was right after we had been criticizing the town hall for spending too much money, as we thought, on cognac. And right after that, there was the July 4 event at U.S. Embassy. Uh, it was the party, and he was there, and I saw him, and I cornered him at one of the star-spangled tables, and I went like, Sir, if you're looking for cognac, they're not serving it here. They're saving. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. <laughs> I don't know why. Still kind of am. Anyway, um, just to give you a background, we were trying at our political satiric program, we were trying to get hold of them and get some response, get some answers. Why so much money was spent on cognac? Maybe there was a reason, maybe we don't know. But no response, nothing. And so there he was, after a few months of really, really critical criticism on our program. And uh, obviously, I expected some brutal standoff. But what happened next was amazing. Words were spoken, some arguments were brought, and a meaningful civil society, public official dialogue was conceived. Something I had missed so much. And when I say I missed so much, I don't mean it happened a long time ago, I mean it never happened. <laughs> That's how much I had missed that. And so the debate was going on, and we were talking, and he was bringing arguments. I was not buying many of the arguments, but then I realized the fact that a public official is justifying his actions, expenditures, that he's bringing arguments, was so cute <laughs> and good and right, it just felt so right, that I thought, um, you know, that's, that's all you need, really. It, it makes public officials look almost human at these moments, you know, of talking to people, talking to public. And then I, it struck me, why do these kind of debates and dialogues need to happen just on July 4th, on Independence Day at the U.S. Embassy? There are so many other opportunities for the dialogue. There is the Columbus Day, <laughs> there is Thanksgiving, Martin Luther King's Day, you know, plus any other day on the calendar. Um, so, uh, just, uh, and I think, I think we, we, we can make it work, we can make that relationship work, we just need to, to, you know, to talk to each other. So today I have brought with myself uh, a few lists, um, these are lists of mental associations that people get when they hear the phrase public official. And uh, one is the realistic list, the, the one I have observed, and one is my wish list. So first, I've brought that list, it may seem tiny, but it's really important. And uh, first is realistic list. How people react to, to this phrase, public official. So, associations. Has a nice car. Is not poor. Has hot secretaries. Which is not bad, necessarily, okay? <laughs> Does, doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, is not scared of traffic police, of traffic fines. Is intimidated by reporters, though. Uh, has a suit that costs more than his annual salary, official salary. Again, these are just the associations. Um, uh, is is uh, mentioned at armed comedy at least once a week and probably hates me. So this is the realistic list of my associations. Now the, my wish list. Can read. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I know they, they all can read. Everybody can read. This is a pure, pure joke, yeah. <laughs> competent, be great. Um, has competent secretaries. I mean, could be hot, no? Coincidentally, but competent. <clears throat> Official's car has a strong logical and mathematical correlation with his salary. <laughs> the kind of logical relation that even a linguist like me can perceive mathematically. Um, speaks English, would be nice, everybody agrees, right? Speaks Armenian. <laughs> this one was inspired by watching long debates at the parliament, you know. <laughs> It'd be really good if they master this language. 
uh, never appears on arm comedy and uh, doesn't hate me. No. <laughs> Last one is like a personal wish. Anyway, I think, I think there's a hope and I think uh, we actually have a lot to get hold of. We have really bright, good, efficient public officials and they're all here today with us. <laughs> so thank you. And I think that's something to start. We just need to start a dialogue. So um, I'm just going to share some of my uh, professional experience in that area. As I said, uh, I work with this uh, political satiric program and I know that a lot of uh, politicians, a lot of government officials, they, they get like, frustrated, they get offended, sometimes insulted by criticism, and when you're doing satire, you, you have to be critical in this area. And uh, so there is a lot of this frustration and you know, being offending kind of sentiment, and I want to say that's okay. That's fine. I don't mind all public officials hating me as long as the budget is safe, and is very spent very efficiently. That's, that's all I want, really. Plus, maybe a Christmas card once a year would be nice. But if the Christmas card doesn't work out, that's fine. You know, I, I can I can live without that Christmas card. Just the basics. You know how in Hollywood movies um, you see a fireman helping a little girl take the take the cat, you know, from the tree. It's, it's not his job, really. It's, it's not on his job description. That's not what he was hired for. But, you know, he tries to deliver an extra useful service, something extra, something nice. Takes the kitty down from the tree. It's cute. Now, in Armenia, going to our area, don't take the cats from the tree. That's fine. There is no need for this extra cute stuff. As far as I'm concerned, the cat can live on the tree, <laughs> you know, as long as... Everything else is done properly. You know, there are cat type of people, you know, there are cat type of people, and there are efficient budget spending type of people. <laughs> well, I consider myself the, the, the second. So I'm just throwing in some ideas. Just want to say it's all doable, it's all doable. And uh, let's hear this sequence again, another mental exercise. Pineapple, banana, maple, strawberry, public official, Strawberry. You feel? One of those is sticking out, right? And it's not strawberry. <laughs> strawberry never sticks out, okay? It's not the strawberry. Well, um, it's a public official, just as a prompting, <laughs> that is sticking out. I mean, it's okay, of course, there should be difference between a public official and a strawberry. It would be, like, ridiculous if there was no difference. Although, kind of... Cool too. Anyway, but this both can be associated with doing useful stuff, vitaminizing health and the society, being useful in general. And I think we can get there. Um, I mean, uh, we, we were able to find good, efficient officials, although it, it took moving TEDx 2015 to 2016. That's how hard it is to find good ones, good officials. Uh, but it is possible, and um, I just uh, want to summarize by saying that you don't hear this phrase enough. Uh, oh my God, hey, look, there is a public official, official walking in the street. Let's go give him a hug to thank him for this recent decision. But you know what? Till recently, you didn't expect people to say, hey, let's go to TEDx, and here are some public officials talking to people to the public, and that is a reality today. So everything is possible, and I'd like to leave you with that bright thought. Thank you. <laughs> plus, plus, you know, there's the Plan B July 4 event at the U.S. Embassy, you know, where the dialogue never fails. Thank you, thank you.